All right, everybody, welcome to Saturday Night Thunder. How's everybody doing this evening? That's it, huh? All right, good. Hey, we're going to do some different kind of worship music tonight. You know how we do stuff differently here in the garage. We're just stoked you're with us. If you guys want to stand or listen, that is cool. That's how we do things here. But we're just happy you're here, and God bless you guys for being here.
or four of you, I'm going to ask you one more time, everybody's warmed up now. Are you in the mood to praise the Lord tonight? Come on! All right. I don't think we played this one last time we were here. So we're going to play it this time. Everybody needs love. A lot of songs written about that. But the love that we really need, you know, is only one love that can get us through all the hard times. And that's the love of Jesus Christ. This one's called I Need the Love. You. 
the salad before the main course. I'm sure of it that we're going to have a great message tonight. Pastor Rock is going to bless us. We're going to do two more songs, and then we're going to get down to the real business of the evening, and that's the that's God's word. Amen. That, that's the real meat when it comes to the main course. You know, you got the salad and stuff, and then you got the meat of the issue. Amen. So I'm looking forward to that. We got a couple more songs and then we're going to get to that. This one, you know, the world is telling everybody right now that everything that has to do with God or tradition is wrong and backwards and, and you're all messed up if you think that the universe was created by a creator if that's just impossible. Well, you know what? Service in the restoration business, and if he can take a life like mine and rebuild it, he can make a universe come on because I was so messed up. Can I get a witness? Amen. Am I just talking to myself or what? All right, come on, somebody. Well, here we're here to say that, and I know that all my brothers and sisters will agree with that, that we reject that opinion. This one's called reject. The system.
so much. That sounds so good. That sounds so good. And you know, aren't we blessed in this country that we can gather together in this house of worship and praise the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. You know, I used to be afraid of a lot of things. And I still get scared sometimes. Anybody hear me or do I need to repeat myself? You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about? Is there anybody else in this room who's been there and done that? I spent a lot of time in Orange County Bible College. And I'm proud to say, I'm not proud of that, but I'm proud to say, that Christ delivered me from that. And the Bible says that you're a new creation through Jesus Christ. You're not, you're not this old rebuild model. You are brand new, amen. And if he did it for me, I can look through this room and see he's in the restoration business. I can tell he's restored a lot of lives in here tonight, amen. We're going to do one more. You know, I can remember being in jail and... I'm not a very big guy, okay? And when I was in jail, I'm pretty scrawny right now, but I was so sucked up and skinny, and I was scared, man, because there's some big dudes in there. There's some big dudes in here. But you know what? I'm not afraid to be in here because I know I'm with my brothers and my sisters, amen? But though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Though I walk through the tears of Orange County Bible College, though I walk through that day room, let me tell you what, I will fear no evil.
you know, it is what it is. I'm here. It's my. It was. It was my birthday. We're well on to my next one. You know, so we don't have to celebrate it anymore. We're good to go. Too late. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I was saying though. You know, we we sometimes just don't want to go to church. Sometimes we just don't feel like being in church. You know, when I was younger. You know, we all, we all know my young story, but when I, came, I was in recovery for a while, I'm well, still in recovery, I guess. You never grow up. Now, that's the birthday that counts. August 3rd counts. There you go. There you go. August 3rd, 29 years. Now, we, but, but, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm working. I'm still got that 28 going. But um, when I was younger in recovery, I decided to start trying to find church again. And I found a couple good churches. But those churches just wasn't quite right for me. Because the pastor wanted to control me. You know, I was still investigating. I was still trying to find my way. And I wasn't happy, but I needed to find something. And what I was looking for was some joy. I wanted to have peace enjoy. And I couldn't quite get there. And so the first few churches that I went to, I liked them, but I was still investigating. And the pastors were a little bit controlling. They were saying, man, dude, where were you at last Sunday? And I went to another church. <laughs> well, why would you do that? Well, because I'm trying to find something. You know? And I don't know where it's at. I know Jesus is in my heart, but you know, I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to get some peace and joy in me. And I don't know how I'm gonna get there. And I and I and I was trying everything, but you know, I had some battles going on, and I'm gonna get a little recovery on you guys tonight a little bit. I, I was a dry drunk. And for you guys that aren't in recovery, a dry drunk is just bad. Because you're in the program, you're doing stuff, but you're just miserable. I'm in church trying to find that. AA wasn't answering my questions. God wasn't answering my questions. And I wasn't there. But I knew I wanted to be somewhere. And I would see people, you know, and, and, it, and it, it just, they had something that I wanted and couldn't quite figure it out. But I always remember this one guy when I was a kid. He was my pastor when I was young. And I talk about him a lot here in this church because he had such an influence in my life. And that was Pastor Chuck Smith. That guy just glowed all the time. You know? He was smiling. He was happy. You know? And even though I was a knucklehead, he was still happy that I was a knucklehead. Because he figured one day I was going to get it. And as I grew up in church and started going to church more and reading this thing more, I realized a few things. That God brings joy. God brings joy. You know, because I would struggle. I would get joyful at some times. Like, I could remember I went through a phase I was staying at Cooper Fellowship Apartments, and those of from around here, probably if you're in recovery, know exactly where I was staying at. At one point, I had nine motorcycles sitting in, the, in my parking stall. Because every time I bought one, I got happy. And I was joyful. And I was feeling good. But then I would get used to riding that thing, and I needed another one. So I'd go out and get another bike. I wouldn't sell the other one. I liked it, but it didn't bring me joy anymore. You reading where I'm going with this? Are you feeling what I'm saying? Those things in the world that bring us pleasure and bring us joy is temporary. It's just a temporary thing. It'll never quench you. It'll never deliver full peace. It will never bring true joy, true joy. And so how do we get that? By fellowship? By Christ in our lives? 
Yes. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures real quick, and then we're going to go on. I think I have a couple to read here. This Bible here has a lot of scriptures, and sometimes I got to find where I was going to read. <laughs> you would think I'd be more organized than that. You know, but I'm not one of those pastors that have the iPad and their things show up on the screen. I'm old school. I just like the way I do it here. You know, let me bring out my phone for a minute. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I can do things too. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. I don't know. It's I, wrote, I wrote that part. You know, so yeah, sometimes we have to use a little bit of technology. And the reason I'm saying that is, is because I wanted to read from the King James Version tonight. Amen. And my Bible is not King James Version that I'm reading, re preaching from right now. And you know what? I was raised in the King James Version. Yep. I like the King James Version. But you know, sometimes you got to go back and forth or whatever. And I, I just kind of wanted to do the King James Version tonight on this. And so I'm going to. I'm reading from 2 Corinthians 1. Chapter 1, 23 and 24. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul, that to spare you I came not as not as yet unto Corinth, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. And what Paul was talking about is when he came back, he came he could have came back and just had dominion over them, demanded things of them, and saying, I don't like the way your simple natures are, the way you're walking with Christ. But he had, he was watching their faith, and he wanted to celebrate their joy. And when we're Christians, we get joy from God. We get joy from his word. We get joy from Christ. But most of all, we get joy through fellowship. You know, and it's important for us to understand that pastors can't sit there and dictate and tell you what to do and tell you how to live and do those things to you. You have to find your own faith, your own joy. But it's here. It's in this word. The joy comes when we have fellowship with like-minded people. When we're joyfully assembled together, we're joyful. And people see that. People feel that. People know that. And it's important to us to have joy in our life. But why is it so important to have joy? Because the opposite of joy is, is miserable, right? Being miserable. And that's a lack of faith. If you have true faith in your life, you're joyful. Even through your trials and your tribulations and whatever you're going through in life, you can still have joy in that because you know what? Your Father is with you. He's right there joined in with you. And that love, that faith, that guidance and everything is there. All you have to do is call upon Him. And your brothers and sisters and everything, same thing. When we're assembled together and we're joyful together, we bring happiness. And those young Christians that are out there that are just trying to find church. Man, I don't want to walk into a church and see everybody off. You know? I want to see people rocking. You know, I want to see jamming. I want to see people joyful. I want to see the Holy Spirit working in their lives. You know, and that's what we do. That's what Paul was talking about. Having faith and getting joy from your faith and growing. That's where it comes from. As you get more faithful and the more that you get to know the Lord, the more joyful you become. Because you know that every little thing that happens might not be a joyful situation, but you can grab joy in it because you know God's in control in charge and in control of it. And so it's real simple, people. It's real simple. Just have that type of joy. 
You know, and I, I didn't pull out my notes, and I forgot what I wanted to say, so I'm going to go to my notes here for a minute. You know? But I'm going to kind of close this out so we can get that rocking and joining together again. So I, I kind of want to bring this up. Is that our example as Christians, we should be joyful. Amen. And I'm trying to preach joyful right now. Amen. But our joyfulness in the Lord should be so contagious, so recognizable to the outsider that they want it. That they seek what we have. And if you're not living that way, if you're not that person right now, check yourself. Start praying. Get into the word. Grab a hold of people that are in church. If it's not this church because you're visiting it, it's at your church, look at that guy that's got that glow, that joyfulness, that happiness, that heart that you know is pierced and that you want what he has. Because you know whatever he's doing, is God is connected with him. And that's what you want. And buddy up with that guy. Say, hey, dude, man, I want what you got. Where did you get it? I have, the, I have God, I have the Holy Spirit, but what are you doing in your daily life that's bringing that joy to you? I need to emulate that. I need to understand how you're doing that. Because I want that in my life. I want to be joyful. I want to walk right. I want to be closer to God. I want those things. I desire those things. My biggest thing is I desire the Lord more every day that I get up out of bed. I want to know him more. I don't get to know him enough. No matter how close I get, I want to be closer. I want more of what he has to offer. I need it in my life. I want to be a joyful person. I want people to see that, recognize that, and know where it comes from. I want them to see Jesus in me. Amen. Thank you for listening to me tonight. Oh, wow. Thank you, Pastor Ron. Where are you going? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. We've got a special surprise for you. Don't you try to run away. You guys are about to see me not be joyful. <laughs> so we want everyone to celebrate with us this pastor of ours, my best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Ow! happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
father, make sure you buy him things. Like I'm talking to my daughter, she's watching my mom. <laughs> buy daddy a lot of things. Hey, if you don't have a father, find a good friend. Find somebody in church that can uh, be your father for you. And you know, we have the ultimate father. So let's not forget about him either. And we do have cake. And we do have cake, I'm told. Thin so, uh, mint. What? Thin, thin, thin mint cake? No. Hey, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the music. Thin mint cake. <laughs> We'll see you all here again on Saturday at 6. Three days later. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday at Halloween. All right. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that Pastor Rod told that story about Chuck Smith because one of my favorite uh, stories about him, I heard Greg Laurie tell it, and it has to do with... Um, And it, ha and it has to do with uh, the joy. Uh, and, it, and the story is that Greg Laurie and Pastor Chuck, and this is when Greg Laurie was younger, Pastor Chuck, were, uh, they, were, they got into a disagreement. And, uh, and they, were, they were pretty, they were at odd over, over some issue. And Pastor Chuck had to go up and preach right after. And the first thing that he did when he got up to the pulpit is he smiled and he said, isn't God good? And Greg Laurie look, was looking at him and he's like, boy, what a hypocrite. He, what does he mean, isn't God good? We just sat there and they just had this big fight, argument and everything. But then later, and as he's recanting the story, uh, he says, you know, uh, of course God is good. And Pastor Chuck, even though they had that disagreement, he didn't lose his joy. He still held on to that joy of the Lord. Amen. It is not easy to do all the time. I'm telling you what. Uh, I get that. Uh, I get that. Amen. I think we all do. So I, I just thank you, Pastor Rod, and a happy birthday, brother. I got. I have one praise report that I want to share. Um, July 26th of this month is going to be my son's two-year anniversary of being clean and sober and free of a heroin addiction that was about 10 years long. And then... So I want to ask you something. I don't know about you guys, but I can use some prayer. Is there anybody else in here tonight that could use some prayer? Amen, amen. Like my past, my old pastor used to say, I used to go to New Wine Church over in Fullerton. And when he would ask that question, if everybody didn't raise their hand, he would say, okay, we'll pray for you guys and we'll pray for liars later. Amen. Uh, that was just a joke. I'm not calling anybody a liar.
is. And this is the best place to hide, amen. When you get in trouble, turn to the Lord, amen. All right, we're going to do three more songs. Before we do, I, I, I don't, I'll, I forget to do this sometimes. But the first thing I want to do is I want to introduce the members of the shield. Well, no, the first thing I want to do is say thank you to the garage for having us here. Thank you. And thank you. It's a blessing to be here, amen, and we love you guys, and it's our privilege to be here to do this for you guys. So without further ado, on my right, give it up for Clay Anderson on the bass guitar. <laughs> And on my left, you're right, his name's Henry, but we like to call him Hank the Crank. Make a lot of noise for Henry Rebago on the lead guitar. And back here on the drums, please make a lot of noise for the Crusher Corey D. Lewis on the drums. Come on. My name's Mark Benefield, and we are the Shield of Faith. Also, if you guys, if you guys like our music, there's a place that you can go on the internet and hear it getting played all the way over in London, England. And it's called the site is called SpectrumRadioPetswood.com. You go there, and they're playing our music, and you can vote for it so you so that uh, they'll keep. And we have some t-shirts. Is anybody wearing a shirt? Hey, where's Greg? Where you at, Greg? You back there, Greg? That guy right there? We have some t-shirts like that. If anybody would like a shirt, um, we're asked for a $15 donation, and we got pretty much all the sizes. So if anybody would like a t-shirt, see me after. Uh, we're all sold out on CDs. I'm sorry, but we're going to get some new ones. This next one we're going to do for you. You know, I talked about how how tore up my life used to be. And back then and now. And I know you guys can relate to this. There's only two roads that you can be on. And that's the road that leads away from jail and the road that leads back to jail. Amen. <laughs>
you know, I don't do this. I don't do this very, I, 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 I don't think I've ever done this, what I'm getting ready to do right now. So I'm just praying the Lord put, put it on my heart. So I'm, I'm just going to trust that he telling me to do the right thing. Hey, brother, what, what's your name? Benjamin? Yes. You need some prayer, Benjamin? Yeah, Come on. You want to come up here? Will you come up here, please? Yes. Come on, brother. Come on. Get some elbows up here. Hand on this brother. I also have a friend in the hospital named Richard Gibson. He's in a band and he flew in a plane. He got off the plane and his stomach didn't feel good. He went to the hospital and they cut him open and uh, kind of did something to his stomach. He was bleeding, so he needs prayer too. Lord, I just pray for Richard right now also, Lord, that you would help him. He's still in the hospital. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I, I, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that, I, and a lot of times God will put something on my heart and say, you know, I want you to do this right now, and I'm, and I'm chicken out, or, and I'm just, I hope that was all right, brother. I didn't mean to front you off, you know. We love you, and God loves you, and I'm, and I'm glad to see you here. Amen. Amen. And uh, I have a card. I'm going to give you my card, and I'm sure there's lots of brothers here that can, that can help you out. Amen. Amen. You know, and God is good, isn't He? Yeah. And, all, and all the time. We live in a country that is still one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This one's called one nation.
wrapped up, musically anyway. I want to thank you for having us again, and I want to thank you, Pastor Brock, for that blessed message. I needed to hear it. Amen. Isn't that, isn't that the way God works? He puts you somewhere when you need to hear something. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to close this one out with something right out of the book of John, John 3, 16. This one's called His Only Son.
Australia. We'll see you real soon.